Over the past several months, we've brought you several stories on Montana's mental health crisis and the toll it's taking on everybody, from families to health care providers to the patients themselves. Last week, I tagged along with Billings Police to go downtown to get a closer look at the challenges law enforcement officers face right now. And this morning, we're going inside the courthouse to examine how the legal system is also affected. A huge issue. It backs up our dockets, it backs up our courtrooms. It fills up our jail, so it's just kind of a ripple effect of what it does. District Court Judge Jessica Fair says systemic issues with mental health in the criminal justice system worsened due to the COVID pandemic. I think we all feel it and see it. After being locked in for, for two years, we're seeing an uptick in mental health issues. We're seeing an uptick in domestic violence related to mental health issues. There is not, I can say, there is not a single drug case that I see in either of my treatment courts and I think in most of my criminal cases where there isn't an underlying mental health issue that maybe went untreated, that maybe they were self-medicating. And for people with severe mental health issues who commit crimes, their cases won't be resolved for a long time. We have some really significantly um, sick people and we have very few options. If a judge decides someone needs to be evaluated for mental fitness before proceeding with their criminal case, that person will sit in jail, waiting in some cases for over a year. The downside is people get worse. So the, the initial symptoms that led me to issue an order for evaluation simply get worse as they sit longer and longer. The state hospital's forensic mental health facility in Galen conducts court-ordered mental fitness evaluations. A Department of Public Health spokesperson tells me there are just 54 beds for inpatient evaluation services. In mid-April, there were 40 men and 27 women on the facility's wait list. District Court Judge Ashley Harada says she volunteers to handle a lot of the civil commitment cases, which means someone is so unwell they're ordered to go to the state hospital for treatment. Lots of times we see people repeatedly coming in to the hospital and then going to the state hospital and then coming back to our community and then going back to the state hospital. And so I'm repeatedly um, committing people and they are not coming back and getting services in our community because lots of times there's no services available. A devastating cycle with no clear end in sight. A devastating cycle. The judges I interviewed for this story do have some ideas on what they believe will help curb this crisis. One of the challenging systemic issues for people with severe mental health issues is that there's almost no case management in our community. So when people return from the state hospital after being committed, they might have no support to remain stabilized, get their prescription filled again. Stays at the state hospital are typically less than a month. We got to figure out a better way once someone comes back to the community to do a solid handoff to the team here to say you have an appointment at the mental health center you know this is going to be the person that's going to make sure you get there this is where you're going to stay there are some big changes coming governor greg gianforte recently signed a measure to create a commission to work on rebuilding the state's behavioral health system with 300 million dollars appropriated from the legislature this session we'll continue to follow that commission's work